What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and I am back with another preview. But this time it's KSW, it's KSW 89, and it's one of the best cards of the year from one of the best promotions of the year in KSW, and <clears throat> it's it's history. History could be made. We could have a triple champion, one of the best fighters in the world, Sardine, Saladin Parnas. He's taking on the undefeated Adrian Bartsinski for the welterweight title after holding the featherweight and the lightweight titles, but... Outside of that, it's a real, 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 real good card with lots of uh, uh, lots of talent on it, and, and in fact, a, a couple of unexpected names. One, one in particular, but I will get to that uh, in a second. But just first of all, on KSW, um, I think KSW probably the most underappreciated promotion in the world, and we've ta- I've talked about uh, about this a few times recently on a few different uh, shows. You know, because obviously I cover a lot of the, the PFL. The one championship cards, the Cage Warriors cards, Bellator, uh, and we'll continue obviously to do it into next year as well. Plus, you know, KSW obviously a lot as well. And I think what KSW can offer to the fans and the fighters is it stacks up with any of them. You know, and and, and you know, we we'll, we'll leave the UFC where it is for a second, but it's it stacks up with any of them. The level of fights they put on, the ability of some of their top fighters. The pay that they gave is very, very good, but the production value and the um, the, the 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 fan experience is second to none. You know, like I I always remember the one KSW event I was at when they came to Dublin. It was it was fantastic. And my guy Sean Dini, I was giving him a shout out. He always gives me a hand with these uh, with these previews and the uh, pronunciations and the facts and everything like that. He'll tell you he's been at all. I believe all the cars this year, like the the, the events they put on, are absolutely fantastic. And you know th- this will be this will be no different, I'm sure. But I, I I always like to make a point of that, right, with KSW because. It feels like they do so well in their region. And, you know, they've gone out to, to different countries. Obviously, they came to Ireland. They went to the UK and things. And, you know, it's not. they don't really need to do that to be a very good MMA promotion. And I think we need to... We need to acknowledge that. You know, let's say if the UFC only did events in America, that wouldn't make them any less good. <laughs> you know, if if, if Cage Warriors didn't go to America and do events, that wouldn't make them any less good. It's good that people move places and do events elsewhere. But at the same time, if you're putting on good events, you're putting on good fights, you have a massive people, massive amount of people watching on TV, massive amount of people going to the events, you pay your fighters well and you have really good fighters. What's not to love? We all have the internet, lads. We can, we can all tune in and we can watch these cars. I um I really think we need to we need to uh give some respect and give more respect to KSW for the things they've done over the last while. Uh and, and not even, when I say the last while, it's years and years and years now. It's it's brilliant. And I saw um I saw my guy Alan Murphy talking recently, uh, there was a few people saying, Oh, the UFC is the only profitable MMA organization in the world. He's made he made the point that KSW is also one of those as well. And the, the fact that they can be profitable and pay their fighters so well, it, it's it's unbelievable. And I've heard some stories about the pay in KSW, you know, um, <laughs> even lads getting UFC offers. And we've, we've t- talked about Solidich b- before and, 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 you know, many others. And even Parnas here, maybe. Like, why would you go to the UFC if they're paying you so well and you're in such an unbelievable place? You know, these events are, are, are insane and, like, the level you're fighting at. Why, well, like, why would you go anywhere? And the fact that they can keep to uh, being a profitable organization while paying their fighters on. It can be done, UFC. <laughs> it can be done. So um, I think there's a lot to respect about KSW and a lot of uh, uh, a lot to enjoy as well because the stuff they put on is absolutely fantastic. So uh, let's get straight into it and let's talk about uh, KSW 89, uh, a fantastic card, two title fights on it. Uh Four champions would that be correct to say? Seeing as Parnas is the champion of two divisions, um, it's it's such an interesting main event between Adrian Bartosinski and and Saldin Parnas. Um, you know, Bartosinski, thirteen and all, as I mentioned, twenty eight years of age. So this is not some old champion who is coming up to 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 to, to take the belt off of or anything like that. Um, you know, like and and 
we, we same with KSW and with uh, even Cage Warriors and other places we see a lot there's an awful lot of times there's you know either vacant titles or new champions or something like that and it almost at times make, makes those fights uh, more exciting I mean when it's to say a younger guy in his career even though he's reached this level to tar- uh, 13 fights in like Bartosinski these lads are fighting for their their lives like these lads are are fighting to keep earning that big money and to get even more money and to headline these big massive cards and to continue to do that and that is that you know that's just another another part of it as well but for Bartosinski I suppose you know he's had a great uh, a great couple of years since 2020 he has won um, seven fights in a row obviously he's won 13 fights in a row but over the last while you know, you know in, in pandemic times and all it wasn't always easy to get fights but he managed to get two in 2020 you know was out for almost a year then got two in 2021 got two last year and one this year as well I suppose the Christian uh, Kozabowski win at the end of last year was a, a, a tremendous win he got to finish there and Arthur Spiziak he also finished him uh, in the first round in fact if you look at his record, 12 finishes in 13 wins. He's a big knockout puncher. Um, just a, a really good, well-rounded fighter. Um, he's only gone to the season once in his career back in 2018. But he's one of these guys, as well. I was talking to Sean about it and he was kind of telling me he's a high-level jiu-jitsu player, but he hasn't really needed it as a pro. Just an absolute knockout power. Like, watching him, he's one of those guys, you look at him and it's just like everything is leading up to that big knockout. And, you know, in your first style defense, it's not it's not always that easy to to fight that way. You know, we see with champions all the time. It's like they, they win the belt and then they kind of change it up. Um, and we'll see. Maybe that's uh, <laughs> maybe that's the case here. But, look, he's training with uh, Pavel Pawlak, who we'll be talking about in a minute here. Um, tr- uh, out of Lutz, where all those are, which I believe is it called, uh, where a lot of the, the top-level fighters fight at. And, um, you know, it's it's one of those ones where if it wasn't Parnas on the other side of him, he'd probably be like the story, you know, but it is Parnas on the other side of him, and when you're a 26 year old double champ going for your third belt, there's something different about it, um, you look at his record over the last uh, few years, and it's it's insane, you know 18-1, and one, but the one loss was to Daniel Torres with the uh, a really good knockout take, nothing away from him, but it was you know, one of those ones you don't see, it came out of nowhere, a four-arm a four arm strike to the head, and he beat Daniel Torres, uh, what was it, 10 months later. Uh, again, you know, unanimous decision, beat him, beat him pretty comprehensively. So, you know, he got he got the win back. But you look at the people he's beaten outside of that, like Roberto Ruhala, Sebastian Rukowski, Daniel Rutowski, as, as I mentioned, Daniel Torres, Roman Skiminski, even Bushinger, uh, Martin Wojciech, Arthur Sawinski, like a lot of these names, like Morgan Charrier, who's in the UFC at the moment, William Gomez, who's in the UFC at the moment. Like this guy has beaten a high level of fighter and he's done it consistently for a very, very long time. You know, uh, 10 finishes in his 18 wins. Uh, you know, a lot of submissions, seven of those by, by a submission as well. So this guy is a finisher, but he... He's not just that. He is such a well-rounded, brilliant, beautiful fighter. He is... I, I remember watching a lot of him for the last fight I did on him and thinking that I've kind of maybe been watching him wrong. You know, uh, and you, you look at him, you look at Barnas and you might think, okay, he's like a kind of a slower-paced, technical fighter. But that's not necessarily him at all. Do you know what I, I kind of... I kind of compare him to, I kind of compare him to, and, and now not as a fighter or anything, but the cadence, kind of the cadence maybe of a Mai Tai guy, right? Where and and what I mean, and the cadence, not and not the fighting cadence, but like the tactical cadence. Let's say that you kind of start slow, you 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 find your way into a fight, you put out a few leads, you put out a few jabs, you wait for your opponent to do something, and like the ability to actually do that. Is fantastic. It's really, I'm sure, and I, I obviously I don't know, but I'm sure it's extremely hard to go into a cage and do nothing, you know, and not, not just do nothing because you know, I want to mean by do nothing is do nothing while waiting to do something, while setting something up, while letting your opponent do something. Like let him go first and then I'll go second. And he does that, but he does that, but he eats up the time. 
And the more time that goes, the more he pounces, the more he lets things go, the more he finds openings, and the more his opponent kind of panics. Um, he makes lads tired and he finishes them. That's the type of fighter he is. And he can do that to you over five minutes or five rounds. You know, he's last three fights in a row, four round finishes, all three of them, four round finishes. That and I, I didn't even know that until I just looked here now. But that is the exact type of fighter Saldin Parnassi is. He will wear you down and cut you out. He really will. He's absolutely fantastic. He's at like a different level of fighter than most you see in the world. Honest, honestly, like if this guy was in the UFC uh, at and uh, maybe not welterweight now as he's gone up here, and we'll talk about that in a second. But if he's at lightweight or featherweight. This guy's one of the best in the world. This guy's fighting in the top 15 of the UFC within a couple of fights, and he's probably fighting top five in the UFC in a couple more. That's that's how good Sarah Lee Parnass is, and people need to realize that. He is fantastic. But the challenge here is welterweight. You know, a past featherweight, a past lightweight. That's big. There's a, there's a big difference between 145 and 170. That's a huge, huge, huge difference. And um, you look at other people who have done it, and very few have been that successful. You know, and not, not only at the very top level, but at any level, moving up kind of two way classes like that. I, I heard Dustin Barrier talking about it recently. And he, he was uh, he was kind of saying like okay I moved up from one forty five to one fifty five he's like I'm just a little bit too small probably for one seventy and you I, I understand that like there's 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 nothing you know wrong or anything saying that about uh, you know saying that it, it's so for some people it's just a matter of fact you know you saw McGregor running up to one seventy I I don't think it suited him um I think it's a massive factor in this fight um Parnas five foot eight. Um, Bartosinski five foot eleven, three inches. You know, not 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 a huge, insurmountable size or anything like that. But there is that size difference, and the way Parnas um fights from the outside and uses often, you know, he's often a longer guy or a, a taller guy. The way he uses it is really good as well. Will he be able to use that as well against a guy like Bartosinski, or will? Him kind of drawing a guy out be a very dangerous game to play against a guy who can punch and hit as hard as Adrian Bartosinski does. Uh, it's it, it's an exciting factor, and it's you know it's very hard to find someone I suppose on the level of Saladin Parnas at lower weight classes, but maybe he has to go up a weight class to actually find that, and maybe we find out here. That to me, like, is the crux of this fight, and it's so exciting to have uh, someone at that level fighting. In, in such a risky fight, but it's such a rewarding fight as well. Imagine to become a three-way champion would be absolutely huge. So um, I think the key here, is, well, there's two keys. First of all, the one I just mentioned, to avoid that big knockout blow, um, which Bartosinski always can do. Probably, probably to avoid getting taken down and getting laid on top of as well against a guy who uh, is a very good jiu-jitsu guy, right? But the next part, I think, and a key for Parnas to win that's the key for him to lose maybe the key for him to win is the speed he you know obviously it might it might sound reductive or it might sound you know uh the obvious thing to say but you're the smaller guy coming up you're the lighter guy you need to use your speed against the bigger guy if he's throwing that big knockout blow it's no good unless he can hit you with it if you're gone before he can touch you that's it you know if you can all, if you can draw it out of him, not get hit by it, and then hit after it, massive. And I look, I think this is going to have to be a longer one for Saldin Parnas. I think it's yeah, and a longer than four rounds, you know, the last three. But I think this is probably going to be, if he wins it, a five round technical tactical display. And you know what? Sign me up for that. I am all in for that. Can't wait for this. Uh, I'm I'm going to pick Parnas. I'm going to pick him. I, I'm going to go. I, I'm interested to see what the betting odds will be like. Let me just check if they're up yet. I, I don't think they are, but this is a, uh, this is a wonderful fight. The type of fight, if you're, you know, if you're a, uh, uh, a fan of KSW, you're a fan of, of European MMA, you're a fan of any MMA, this is the sort of fight 
you want to be uh you want to be in for. Actually the betting is up. Parnas is the underdog plus one fifty, minus two hundred for Bartosinski. So that is that's that's crazy. Like and not a crazy price. You know, I understand why Bartosinski is the favourite, but uh whew, for Parnas to be an underdog in any fight is is crazy to see. But uh, I'm looking forward to it and I uh I hope you are too. I cannot wait for that one. Um Right. Let's look at a, a couple of the other fights on the card here. It, it feels, I feel like I could talk for about a week about that fight because I just love it so much. But there's another title fight on this as well. Uh, Paul Palak uh, against Michelle Materla, who's been around for a long time, a legend, one of my favorite fighters out of KSW to uh, to watch. Um, you know, Palak now as well, you know, he's getting a little bit older himself, 34 years of age, fighting out of Wuj as well. Um he knocked out Tommy Ramanovsky to win the belt, and this is his first defense, just like uh, his uh, uh, his f- fellow Woods person in Bartosinski in the main event. Um, he used to be in the UFC, as we, as we all know. Um, on, um, you know, he got he had some top level opponents, I suppose, uh, in uh, in the UFC. He fought Leon Edwards, fought Peter Sabata, you know, and more. And he, you know, he won a couple of fights in the UFC as well. But, you know, I suppose it did, the run just didn't go for him. And that was seven, eight years ago, eight years ago now at this stage. You know, the only fight he has lost since that uh, run in, in 2016, he lost one fight out in FEN just after. But since then, he's only lost to... Um, uh, to Daniel Skibinski, who I've mentioned in this podcast many times, is a very, very uh, good fighter. But look, look at the guys he's beaten. Tom Breeze, as I mentioned, uh, Tommy Ramanovsky last time out, Damian Janikowski as well. Some really, really, really top guys. But uh, for Matarla at the other side of it then, 39 years of age, legend, you know... He'll be. It, it, I, there is a KSW Hall of Fame, isn't there? He'll be in that without a shadow of a doubt. Former champion, um, trains out of the Berserker team, which a lot of the, the top fighters do as well, um, and just a, a fighter who can do it all. You know, thirty three and nine in his career, as I said, at thirty nine years of age, and he lost that fight, I suppose, to uh, Marius Pujanovski going up to, to heavyweight. You know, which is a bit bad um, in in a fight that I thought he was going to win. To be honest, but he's bounced back from that. Like that's that's the type of fight that maybe you don't come back from. But he has bounced back from it. Beat Kendall Grove uh, and uh, Pozuski last last time out um and now he's back into position you know that Pojanovsky fight is the only fight he you know that I suppose he was you know that wasn't against a top level guy at his weight class in the last fight he lost to Saldic he lost to ask him a couple of times he lost to Kaladov but it's 2013 before you know he's lost the fight uh, outside of those guys and, you know the, the level of guys he's beaten uh, in between it, like he's beaten uh, Husamar Pal Harris, beaten Paulo Tiago, Martin Zavada, Damian Janikowski, Alexander Illich, and, and, and a few more of the guys I mentioned earlier. And this guy is is a beast, and he's a beast of a fighter as well. You know, powerful. He can take you down if he needs to and submit you. Um, he's a jiu jitsu black belt and a very good one at that. But he is just all about excitement. You know, he's a guy that uh, I I don't know how to explain it. He like if Tom Brady came out in New England, or, or you know, Ray Keane came out in uh, at Old Trafford or something like that. He is uh, as, as Sean Dini always says about him. He's the beaten heart of KSW, and he really, really, really is. Having said that, this is a tough fight for him, um, and you know he's plus three hundred minus four twenty five to win this. Uh, I think Pollack is uh, is rightly that price. You know, Matarla still has a lot in him, but I think at 39 years of age, I think it's going to get tougher and tougher. Um, I think Pollack is probably going to, um, you know, be this sharper on the feet, maybe. Pick him off a little bit, walk forward, avoid that um, power, and maybe pick him off over a few rounds. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think it should be a, a very, very good fight. Um other than that, then we'll, we'll run through a couple more fights here. Tommy Ramanovsky versus Damian Janikowski. You know, <laughs> these are probably two of the names that uh, we mention a lot in these previews because they've fought so many good guys, but also they're, they've been around, you know, uh, Ramanovsky, 18 and 9 now, 34 years of age. You know, as I mentioned, he just fought Pavel Palak last time out. He was on a five-fight win streak before that. You know, he's also been there with the likes of Patrick Kilinic. Um 
you know and, and many more o- over the years uh you know beat Daniel Skibinski who I just mentioned earlier on as well and in for Janikowski nine and five now at, at 34 years of age you know he's been in there with Tom Breeze um uh obviously Paolo Palak as well uh Jason Radcliffe who's fought in in, in there a few times he's been in there with Yannick Batty and beat him as well and uh and Michelle Materla uh to boot um he was the I think it was the London Olympics where he won the bronze medal, wasn't it? And the the Greco Roman wrestling, and you know he's had a good career in KSW because of that. I suppose background, he's been put in there with some very very good guys, uh, and it's I suppose hurt him a little bit. But when you're at that level, you you have to be, um, as I said, thirty four now. His striking has improved, gets drawn in maybe a little bit, but he has that power. Um, but he needs to get back to the wrestling here and in all these fights, I suppose. When you are that good, you need to do that. Uh, Romanowski on the other side of it, then, you know, he loves, I suppose, to be the guy that comes from behind. Um, you know, he, he is very good jiu-jitsu and very good on the ground as well. But again, another guy who likes to box and likes to strike. And uh, honestly, I, I hope this one hits the ground at some stage. But I also hope there's a bit of a brawl before that, you know. So, um, we'll get you the price on, on, on this one if it's up. Um, Janikowski plus 400, sorry, plus um, 140 minus 188 for Romanovsky. Um No, I, I maybe I, 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 I'll, I, I'll give my pick. And I'll give the betting picks next week. I'm gonna go. Uh, I think I'll go for Romanowski in that one, but I think it's uh, it's a close one. We'll see how those uh, odds move as well over the next while. Um, after that, then a fight I'm really looking forward to is uh, Matters Flaminas is taking out Andreas Zibek. Uh, I believe it's uh, it's pronounced. And I was very very uh, shocked, honestly, to see. That matters for me, and this is on this. If anyone knows matters, um, and you should know him, he's been in cage wires for a long, long time. I thought he was on the verge of fighting for a title, but no, he shows up here in KSW, 35 years of age. Like, honestly, I, I, I'm surprised that the UFC haven't taken a chance of Flaminas over the last few years. Look at the lads he's beaten. I mentioned Daniel Skiminski, beat him, beat Alexei Mantikivi, beat Jesse Urholland, beat Oban Elliott who's in the UFC at the moment, beat Mick, beat Mick Stanton, who's a middleweight champion. Okay, he's lost a few fights in the middle of all of that as well, but he beat George Hardwick. This guy beat, um, you know, he's beaten, beaten a Matthew Bonner, another former champion. The amount of guys this guy has beaten is absolutely huge. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him getting a massive opportunity in Cage Warriors, or in uh, KSW as well as all the opportunities he's getting in Cage Warriors. But his opponent, you know, 33 years of age, he's on a, a two-fight win streak now, a former FEN two-time champion, really good kickboxer, but you know, if I've if I would pick anyone in this sort of scene to beat a flashy kickboxer, who would it be? It'd probably be Matters Flaminas. He can pull you down, take you down, pull the fight out of you, take the fight out of you. And destroy you. I, I love watching Matters Flaminas, the Latvian Express Choo Choo. We'll all get that. Um, and I'm I'm really excited to see him make a run here in KSW uh, and to see what he can do. You know, fighting in the welterweight division now as well. Very, very, very excited about uh, about that fight and about him in, in KSW. Another guy I'm excited to see back in KSW, Martin Held. He's fighting Raul Tataruli. Um, who, uh, you know, is a good solid fighter fighting out of uh, Georgia, known for his kickboxing. There's a lot of, I suppose, the Jordans are. Georgian MMA has, has gone mad over the last few years, uh, but he can grapple as well. He's a very, you know, good fighter. But Martin Held, we all know him for his, um, his jiu-jitsu, uh, being in the UFC, PFL and other places, but he's back now in KSW. Um, and I suppose you'll be looking for him to, to get in there, get the takedown and, get, you know, use his... Uh, he's world class jiu-jitsu because you know sometimes guys get away from it and I don't know and I don't necessarily think he has but in certain fights maybe he's gotten away from it and he's coming in here you know he's a minus 200 uh, favourite I, 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 you know you look at his opponent he's obviously seven losses he's lost four times by submission so go in there do that get him down to the ground and you're held you know you're 13 one years of age he hasn't fought since uh, you know how, how long is it now 16 months or something like that since he fought Ireland's own Miles Price uh, in the uh, in the PFL massive opportunity here and I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing that one um, 
just on the uh, the last fight as well, is the betting up for that one? It uh, it in fact isn't. So we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll leave that one. Um, okay, let's run through a couple of the other fights. Then this is like a really, really, really good card to be honest. In the heavyweight division, Victor Peshta, um, who we all know was fought in UFC and PFL, uh, very good grappler. Rear naked choke has the power on the feet. You know he's a lot of KOs as a heavyweight would. Um, you know he could not not a million miles away. I'd say from a, a title shot um, a, against uh, the the legendary Philip the Freeze, another guy who will be in the KSW uh, uh, Hall of Fame. I think in, in not uh, not too far away. It's a um, Pesha came back to KSW in September, got a very good finish uh, in that fight. Um, you know, his opponent fought Philip the Freeze last time out, ended up getting choked out there, but he was on a two, uh, four fight win streak uh, before that uh, and won um, seven of his last eight as well prior to that as well. So, massive opportunity here for Victor Peshta. If he wins it, goes to, you know, two in a row. Phil the Freeze has cleaned out that division, if we're being honest. So, they need new guys or, or guys who are coming back, I suppose, like Peshta to, to give him. Uh, a few matchups and that could be that one here so looking forward to seeing that one as well um, the betting for that plus 115 minus for Pechta Bayor is the favourite at minus 150 so interesting and we'll see how that one uh, goes there um, Sebastian Rakowski as well you know, four fight from the bottom to, to be taking on uh, Wilson Varela that's a, a top level fight there uh, Rakowski is um, from Poznan Trains with the likes of Gamrat and Manakovsky, uh, you know, uh, that, that Sanda specialist, f- really good footwork, um, you know, picking his opponents apart, really good striker, but he's gotten better at wrestling, you know, with the likes of Gamrat and, and uh, Manakovsky. How could you not, I suppose? And in Varela, um, he's a Frenchman uh, fighting out of uh, Marseille, 28 years of age, uh, good on the ground, um, and has very good cardio and can strike as well so i'd probably pick rakowski uh in that one he is the favorite minus 150 minus 115 as well uh for his opponent um to move uh lucas hareski against ahmed via 31 year old against 27 year old uh via who is uh, from bosnia uh, he fought in Octagon, I believe, recently as well. A very good grappler. Um, Lucas at the other side of it then. Um, well-rounded, but very dangerous on the feet. Can wrestle if he needs to. Um, I, I think I think he'll be favoured in this one. He is the favourite of minus 300. So, yeah, I'd definitely pick him in that one. And in the opening fight, uh, of the, actually, sorry, there's two more fights left. Uh, there's a women's flyweight fight as well between um, Emilia Charvinska against... I got warned over this one from, from John. Natalia Bachinska Karevitz. Definitely had that one right. Um, Natalia, 7 and 3, uh, 28 year old. Um, very tough. A lot of decisions on a record, but a good boxer. Uh, Emilia, 33 year old, fighting out of Pepe MMA. Uh, has some pro boxing, kickboxing record as well. So uh, even though she's, you know. BJJ, I think purple belt or something like that. She's a two-time K1 uh, champion, nine-time Polish champion. So I think this will probably be one that we see on the feet. And in the opening fight at night in the featherweight division, uh, Wojciech uh, Chedowski against Mikhail Domin. Uh, here we go for that one again. Wojciech Kachasko. 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 Anyway, uh, Wojciech. 3-1 and one against 5-3 and three. Domin uh, Vajic is fighting out of Pepe MMA as well um, and his brother uh, Mashek is a KSW veteran very good kickboxer good leg kicks uh, and Domin then um, he you know his three losses are some very very good guys uh, Rukala Groslev who's fighting out of SPG I believe and uh, Patrick uh, Kizmarshak so he's been in there with a high level guy all around finisher on the feet and on the mat uh, and always looks for that finish as well so very exciting one there and uh, the betting in that is uh, Vicek is the favourite minus 150 minus or plus 115 for Tommy so we'll see how that goes alright everyone that is it for me for the KSW preview I, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this card history could be made in the main event if Saldin Parnas wins and becomes a, a triple champ the champ 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 is here <laughs> <laughs> on, on, uh, on, uh, on Saturday possibly so tune in for that 
And uh, thank you for tuning in for this. My name is Sean Sheehan for Shardog.com and I'll see you all next time.